G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope that you are super well. Today we are going to do a try on haul with the 28 to 400 f4 to f8, the brand new Z mount lens from Nikon. And by try on, it doesn't mean we're going to take photos or shoot video. It means we're going to try it on these representatives. Thank you very much for being here today, representatives of the Z mount. We have the Z30, the Z50, the ZF, the Z6, the Z8 and the Z9. Of course, there are more cameras in the range, but I think this gives us a good starting point to see the ergonomics, which is really super duper important, but even more important than ergonomics, the aesthetics of how this lens looks. All right, let's get into the 28 to 400 try on haul. All righty, well, we're gonna start here with the veritable, yes, it is the veritable Z6. And how does it feel with this lens? Well, what's fantastic about this lens is it's only 700 and 25 grams. It is a super light lens, which means for a camera like the Z6, which from my perspective is about on the edge of ergonomically what I would like, I prefer to have slightly more space below my pinky finger. Uh, that's where the Z8 for me is sort of the perfect sized body that doesn't have a vertical grip. But weight wise, this feels absolutely fantastic. And I think it looks really lovely. And as we're here talking about aesthetics and ergonomics, let's talk about this beautiful, what I call the matte box, because it looks like a matte box, but it's the lens hood. Now I have been told there have been other rectangular lens hoods previously in Nikon's lineup. This is the first time I've noticed it. I like it. It's a little bit cine. That means it's a little bit red. Nikon, cine. Super excited about that. Z6, looking good, feeling good and everything about it is working as I would expect. Now, let's just have a quick look at very far. This lens has got fast focus. So fast focus on a Z6, no problem jumping from about three meters to about 10 meters, super quick. Just go and create, go find joy in the simple things of our existence. So please, if you haven't commented before, I would love you to comment today. ZF aesthetic action. Now, ergonomics is very subjective when it comes to the ZF or the ZFC. Obviously, these are cameras made with 1970s and 1980s aesthetics and ergonomics, which includes having a relatively flat front. One way to get around that flat front is to add your own grip. And there are now three or four on the market. They're all fantastic. This one has a red line on it. How about that? The small rig one is very good also. And there are a couple of other brands. And if you'd like wood, you can even get wood on your grip. And I think for a lens of this size, I, th I think getting a grip probably makes sense. Now, interestingly, the ZF with all of this setup does feel heavier than the Z6, but with this grip, absolutely works superbly. And there it is there on the beautiful Sunset Orange ZF. And speed of focus, well, I expect everything to be snappy. Wow, yeah, super fast. So between five meters and 20 meters, ZF works magically. And obviously we've got that synchro stabilization, which, wow, yep. Man, that is as solid as a rock. This lens is gonna leave my care pretty soon. It's gotta go off and visit some other lovely people. If I get to test it again, I'd love to test it out on the ZF because I can see that that in-body image stabilization with the synchro, with the VR in this lens, it might even be better than the Z8 and the Z9. We certainly were led to understand that the Z8, Z9 IBIS units and the ZF units were not the same. More recently, I've heard they're physically the same, but the programming might be a little bit different. Might be optimized for this new lens. Makes sense where this lens and where the ZF are aimed at. And well, whatever new cameras come this year. All right, let's move on to... handheld.
on the 28 to 400. The Z30 on a little bit of one of my many uh, jobby things because as mad as it seems, you can actually vlog with this lens. But with the DX crop, might be a little bit difficult, but you can maybe tell me. Well, I can tell myself, can't I? Yes, I can. All right, let's get all the settings right on this. No, no, no EVF, oh my God, end of world. We are getting full eye detect and full face detect. You know, that is, that is actually, it is possible. I'll swing this round, hopefully you can see it. That is possible, I think, just because 28 becomes something like 42 mil, field of view equivalent, is that right? Yeah, becomes 42 mil, which is, which is pushing the friendship, but yeah, at full stretch, that's working. Used on an APS-C sensor at 42 mil, and, and we're, still getting, we're still getting something. It's certainly possible to do it. Now, how does this feel ergonomically? Actually, you know, the interesting thing about Nikons, even their smallest bodies, the Z50, the Z30, is the ergonomics are still great, considering how small and how inexpensive they are. And because of the overall weight, and let's just disconnect that for a second. Yeah, that actually is really good. And um, there is no EVF. We'll do the EVF stuff on the Z50. But that is a good sort of, because the, the Z30 is aimed at vloggers and video and so on, probably more than stills shooters. Really good feel, totally works. And of course, you go from 42 mil all the way out to 600 mil. That is very versatile, working beautifully. All right, let's go over to the Z50. There it is, and even with a lens of this size, there's still plenty of space for my fingers between the lens and the grip. That is something that Nikon cares about. They care about ergonomics. So this feels fine in the hand weight-wise. Obviously, it's not distributed the same way a Z8 or a Z9 would, but it's still working. Now let's go EVF here. With cameras like the Z50, it's just the lenses VR, which is absolutely working. I can see that it's not as stable as cameras that have in-body stabilization as well but definitely still stabilized. Yep, very impressive for such a budget kit. You could take this kit, the 28 to 400 and the Z50, you could take it all over the world. You have 42 mils out to 600 mils and you maybe need just something on the wide end if you're say stuck in some architectural places where you do really want a wide shot. And that's kind of all you'd need. Focus is working great. Ergonomics is great. Feels good. Here we are on the Epic Z8, and this is what I made the launch video with. Obviously, this lens and this camera work superbly together. You basically have the ultimate all-rounder camera that I think is out today in the market with one of the, if not the most ultimate all-rounder lens. Now, as I said in the launch video, this is not an S-class lens, but it does allow you to shoot from 28 mils to 600 mils if you apply the APS-C crop, 600 mils field of view equivalent. Immense all-rounder, so many opportunities. And if you're happy to shoot in 4K uh, high speed, you can also go to the 2.3 times crop with this lens, which puts you out to 920 mils. So as a basic kit to give you just so many options, the Z8 and the 28 to 400 really gets you going. Ergonomic wise, well, it's the perfect size grip for hands like mine. All my fingers are covered. We can see the pinky is covered here. The balance is great. Everything is awesome about it. We know how well it works on the Z8. Now we know technologically wise, 
it's going to work exactly the same or near on exactly the same on the Z9 and it's really just going to be the ergonomics. But it does look cool. I think it really looks cool. It's a great combo. The proportions are really looking good. We've got the big body and the big lens. And I have to say, of all of the combos, that's probably my favorite aesthetically, along with the ZF Sunset Orange, which I just completely in love with. And how does it feel? Well, it feels great. Obviously, the Z9 weighs more than this lens at only 725 grams. This is over one kilo. So you've absolutely got no handling problems whatsoever. It's very fast. Now, the further you zoom and the bigger the differential, the further you zoom, the focus does slow down a little bit. And if you're sort of in the mid range, in the 100s to 200s, it's very snappy. But go further, 400, does slow down slightly. This feels good, it looks good, and again, as I said in the launch video, this is just such a great all-rounder lens that any photographer could have in their kit to get them out of any photographic dilemma. Almost any. Probably, look, if, if you are really good at your craft, it probably can get you out of any situation. I, I think I could almost get out of everything except requiring ultra-wide, but even that, you can do multi-shot with a lens like this and then stitch together because Photoshop stitching is so good. But hey, that's a conversation that we can have in the comments. I would love to talk about, can we trip up this lens? Yes, it won't do macro, but what else? What else won't it do? Even so close focusing is 20 centimeters from the focal plane, that's pretty close at 28 mil. Love to hear your thoughts about the lens. Which is your favorite look? Which camera do you like this lens on the most? And are you interested in getting this lens? I'm gonna put up a poll, yes or no, for the 28 to 400, a surprise lens from my perspective. All right, let's talk more in the comments below. It's been so good to see you. And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. All right, bye for now. Tamron have just released the version two of this lens here, the 28 to 75 for native Z mount. Go check out my video here. But it, it goes on all of these cameras and it works like a dream. That's all you need to know.